Well, it's good to see everybody here. Come on in and let's worship the Lord. Amen. Would you stand with me? In Psalm 49, we read, Psalm 48, we read these words, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Once again, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Let's sing about it together, shall we? Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your banner, let the anthems ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. God, Lord God, we love you, we praise you, we offer our, our deepest gratitude, our deepest praise unto you today. From our hearts, Lord, the greatest command of all, worship the Lord your God to, and, and to keep you first in our lives, Lord. Bless us now and help us to honor you. We love you, Lord, and we pray your blessings upon this time, this fellowship together. In Jesus' name, amen. Greet one another. Tell somebody you're glad that, you're, that they're here. So glad that you're here today. May the Lord be praised. I hope you had a great week this week. I know we did. We had a great time yesterday as about 11 of us went over to the village of Oak Creek uh, to the Nazarene Church there near Sedona. And we packed uh, some crisis care kits. We did over 2,000 crisis care kits yesterday. And uh, I think we did it in about, what, two and a half hours, maybe? Uh, so it was a tremendous team effort. I'm not sure how um, many people were there, but uh, with our 11, well, it just went really well because of our 11 being there, of course. Uh, come on now. Come on, work with me. Work with me. It was, it was our 11 that really made it really go well. And that's true. I mean, uh, some of our folks were really organized and and uh, made it happen so it was just a lot of fun we'll do that again next year hopefully i would like to say that um and by the way for those of you who don't know what the crisis care kits these are little little two gallon plastic bags filled with with um uh, soap and toothpaste and shampoo and all the all the things that happen that you don't think of when you're rushing out of your home because it's being on fire or it's uh, whatever. So in times of great crisis, whether it be uh, 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 floods or terrorism or hurricanes or whatever, and people are displaced, these crisis care kits are ready to go 
uh, and they go to those areas to help people when they find themselves displaced and they're in a refugee camp or whatever. Uh, these kits are ready to go to help these folks out in a, a time of crisis. So it's a wonderful ministry. It's something that we really enjoy doing. And our crisis care kits here on the Arizona District will uh, be uh, sent to a warehouse and whenever there is a crisis or war or something like what's happening in Ukraine right now. We had, I'm not sure how many thousands of crisis care kits went to that area to help with the refugees and so on. So uh, anyway, we'll, we're going to try to follow up and find out a little bit more about where those kits are, are going. So we, keep you informed. When we, put these, when we do these kits over there, it costs them $6.15 to put one together right at that amount. If we do them here by ourselves, it's $20 to yeah, make one. They're able to buy in bulk. So they buy in bulk, and then everything is exactly like it's supposed to be. If they take a crisis care kit over to another country, and somebody goes through and checks it, and it's not exactly like what it says, they will not put send those through. The entire and shipment The is whole held entire back. ship is held back. And so sometimes just set in storage. So when we take them over there, all of that is, is put together. The only issue that we have right now is that they are having a hard time with the money that they need to ship them. Yeah, we sure were, our church put 500 in, but the, the amount that they need is another 2,000. Yeah. So if God la lays this on your heart to help send those, then just put a, a, something in the offering and say four crisis care kits. Yeah. So anyway, but we had a great time. Vera was over there. She yeah. even came in her yeah. wheelchair. Yeah. She sat in a chair and she put everything she together. She was the, uh, the ins one of the inspectors. Yes. To make she sure inspected that we got to make it right. sure we got it right. She was quality control. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was great. Could great, we have everybody time. stand that went? Yeah, so that we idea. can see yeah, who was there here, yesterday. If you're today. here and you were there you yesterday, went. stand yeah. up. Because yeah. David yeah. helped us really great. Yeah. We had a yeah. wonderful time, Jerry yeah. and George yeah. and Angeline. We had a great time. And if yeah. you've never been, and Dave and Jack were there, if you've never been, it's fun. It is. And Good then exercise. they provide a meal for us. You get your steps in. Yeah. You got more probably than me. <laughs> Very good. So uh, we'll do that again next year, hopefully. But if you would like to help contribute to uh, the shipping costs, uh, purchase costs and shipping costs, uh, they did greatly increase this year. So if you'd like to help out with that, we would uh, greatly appreciate that. We're, we're going to be having our pray, pray, uh, praise and prayer time tonight at 5 o'clock and then a meal following. So I hope you'll come tonight at 5 o'clock for a great time of prayer. Aren't you glad for the Supreme Court decision that just came out um, on Friday? Isn't that great? Absolutely amazing. I think, uh, I think it will, uh, it, obviously there's going to be some concern and turmoil, but folks, I think if, if, if our nation just repents before God and gets right before God, w what does the scripture say? If we repent, right, and turn fully to him, then he will hear our prayers and heal our land, and our land needs healing right now. So tomorrow um, uh, uh, evening at six o'clock will be another candidate forum. The uh, five uh, candidates for town council will be here on the stage and I'll be the moderator asking them the, the questions that come in. If you want to hear from the council candidates and hear directly from them what their beliefs are, what their stances are, or certain issues, then come tomorrow night. Uh, we had a huge crowd last M Monday when we did the the mayor candidates and uh, I expect that we'll even have a even bigger crowd tomorrow so come tomorrow and hear personally from them and by the way it is being recorded and will be posted if you're not able to see it the the mayor uh, forum uh, is posted on our website church uh, I mean I'm sorry on our YouTube channel so if you want to see what the mayors uh, had to say about the uh, different issues we need to, we need to be informed before we vote don't aren't wouldn't you agree we don't want to just vote on whoever it's very important and very vital that we know uh, who to vote for and to be that salt and light uh, in that way and make sure that we elect people who truly do represent what is good 
and, uh, and so on. So come tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. Come early. Uh, for those of you who I uh, know and love, you can get in early, okay? How's that? All right. I did let some people in early, but it's because I knew who they were. So uh, anyway, uh, men's coffee time Wednesday at 10 o'clock at Tiny's. Uh, they're on 260. We'll have a great time once again, and may God bless you. Uh, Scott Townsend was not here last Sunday, so could we sing happy birthday to him because he's you know here today? Would it be okay if we do that? Because we like to do that. Don't you appreciate uh, all of our folks? Let's sing happy birthday to Scott, okay? We're going we're gonna to play catch up. I don't think there's any birthdays or anniversaries this week, so we can do that, can't we? Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Give him a hand. We love our folks. Do we have another birthday? Bob, you have a birthday today, and we didn't know about it? Let's sing happy birthday to Bob. Can we do that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> now we got you covered. <laughs> Amen. What, another birthday? Who? Oh, okay. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you. All right. Praise the Lord. Huh? Yeah, we could do that. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Is there anybody else? <laughs> we want to make sure that you are loved and cared for. Praise the Lord. Father in heaven, thank you for this time that we've been together today. Lord, bless us now and help us to honor you. Lord, most of all, I pray that everyone here will deeply understand and have a whole new appreciation for the fact that you love us, you care for us every day. You watch over us. Lord, impress that on us and let that change our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. One more quick thing. If there's any of you who would like to help out with the project in Sholo this next week, be sure to see me about that. Uh, that's one of our zone churches, and they're doing a restart of that Sholo church, and they, there's some work that needs to be done uh, starting on Wednesday uh, through Friday. They're hoping to be done by Friday evening, so if anybody w has some time and you'd like to go and be a part of that, uh, uh, help with that uh, work, that remodeling work, let me know, and uh, we'll see if we can arrange a trip, okay? Anything else? There was something If else. you're wanting to go on that, they are needing people that can paint. They are going to be tearing out carpet and everything like that on Wednesday. On um, Wednesday's not as good of a day for us, but Thursday is a good day. They're going to be painting. They're going to be doing cleanup around the area, and hopefully we can make this nice for the next pastor coming in. Yep. Very good. Well, praise the Lord. Let's sing together, shall we? <clears throat> Sorry. God can do anything, anything, anything. God can do anything but fail. He can save, He can keep, He can cleanse, and He will. God can do anything but fail. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. can do anything but fail. He loves us and he cares for us deeply. Praise the Lord. Let's sing about that. How many of you believe that God does really watch over his own? He, he watches over his own people. He loves us. He cares for us. And he's watching us and watching over us like a mother caring for her child, like a father caring for his child. That's our Heavenly Father. Let's sing about it, shall we? I trust in God wherever I may be.
trust in God. I know He cares for me. I'm out in me. in God or in the lion's day on battlefield or in the prison day the praise or blame through blood or flame my heavenly father watches over me I trust in God I know he, he cares for me you today with what's happening in our world do you believe that with all your heart is your faith in him aren't you glad that God said I care for you 
In fact, he said, cast all your anxiety on me because I care for you. Do you believe that today? How many of you would say, I believe that with all of my heart? No matter how difficult life may be, I know that I can cast that care on him and know that he loves me and that he will make a way. He does care for me. I'd like for us to sing that chorus now. And if you would like to come and pray about anything that's really burdening you on your heart, I want to invite you to come. This altar is open. It's always open for you to come and pray. But if there's something that's really burdening your heart and you just want to express in a tangible way your trust in the Lord, I invite you to come as we sing this song. I cast all of my cares on you. Would you stand with me if you, w if you would like to and just make it easy for folks to be able to come to the altar if they would like to as we sing this song. I cast all my cares on you. to come and pray with these who are here at the altar. I invite you to do that. Or you may be seated. Let's go before the Lord, shall we? Father in heaven, how we love you. How we praise you today. How we thank you, O oh God, that you not only have saved us, you've redeemed us, you've made us in a right relationship with you through our faith in Jesus. But we know that you care for us. You don't save us and then just dump us and say, have a nice life. You care for us. Every detail of our life, you care. And Lord, we confess sometimes we just need patience because we're used to putting a cup of coffee in the microwave and pressing the button and out it comes. But with you, you call us to wait on you. And your scripture says, wait on the Lord and that we will be mounted up like with wings, like with eagles. But sometimes it takes time. Sometimes the answer doesn't come immediately. So teach us, Lord, how to wait. Teach us, Lord, how to trust, how to turn everything over to you and allow you to have your way in every situation. Lord, you see what's happening in our world today. You see the turmoil. You see the rioting. You see the anger. You see the, the, uh, the, the, the clashes. You see the, the busted out windows and the, and, the, and the rage. You see decisions being made. You see the broken hearts, the broken families. You see all of these things and so much more. Lord, teach us to trust in you. Teach us to cast all of our cares on you. Teach this nation, Lord, as the sign out on the street says, the solution is simple. Return to faith in God. And that's what you want us to do. You want us all, Lord, to humble ourselves before you, not just in word, but deep from the heart, trusting in you for everything. Lord, for those who are struggling with addiction, we pray, Lord, that you would set them free. 
for those, Lord, who are struggling with broken relationships. We pray that you will mend, that you will heal, that you will restore. For those, Lord, who have wayward children or grandchildren, we pray, O oh God, that your spirit would be poured out and that you would cause them, Lord, and draw them unto you by the power of your spirit and help them to turn to you. For those who are struggling with financial issues, Lord, you said, seek me first and my kingdom in your life, and I'll take care of the rest. So we hear your promises, and we trust in your promises. There are, Lord, there are those, Lord, who need a special touch from you. We, we think of, uh, of uh, Homer and Andy. We think, Lord, of, uh, of Jenny that we just heard about. We pray for her, Lord. We pray for, Lord, others that we uh, uh, may not know their names right now, but you know them of our church family that just need a special touch from you. We lift them. Lord, you said cast all of our cares, all of them, because you want us to be at peace in our hearts, knowing that you are actively caring and loving and taking care of these things. So we trust in you, Lord. We trust in you for all these things. We pray that you'll continue to lead us as a church family to accomplish your will these days, your ministry that you want done through this church family. We pray, O oh God, that you will lead us. You're the, you're the commander-in-chief. You are the CEO, Lord. And we are merely, merely your followers. So help us, Lord, to honor you and to do your kingdom business until that day comes that you call us to be with you for all eternity. And we look forward to that day. Lord, if there's someone here who does not know you as Savior, we pray, Lord, by the end of the service that your Holy Spirit will work in their hearts and cause them, Lord, to say yes to you, Jesus I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. Have your way, Lord, in our hearts and in our lives these days. In Jesus' precious name, we pray all these things. Amen and amen. Let's sing that together again, shall we? I cast all my cares upon you. I cast all my cares upon you. feel good to have burdens lifted anybody does it feel good it sure feels good to me to just sense that God really is in the, in control he's got this and we praise him for it well praise the Lord anybody have a testimony you want to share that you just can't hardly you're it's just burning you just want to share from your heart what God is doing in your life and Anybody? Carol? That's okay.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the kind of stuff he loves to do. Anybody else have a testimony you want to share? Praise God. You know, that's something that we seldom think about, about God's presence. His presence is here. His presence is in Washington. I'm not sure about Washington, D.C., but it's Washington State. His presence is, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Sorry about that. His presence is there too, amen. But, uh, you know, wherever we go, God's presence is there, ministering and loving people and caring for people. Praise the Lord. Well, we've been on an extended journey for a side journey, I guess you could say, and, uh, not necessarily a rabbit trail, but we've been kind of focusing on, on uh, different things for uh, a, a little bit of time um, and kind of taken a, a sidestep from our series, The Seven Essential Ministries of the Church. So I want to come back to that now, uh, at least for this week. Next week, by the way, is July 4th weekend. Uh, so we're going to kind of uh, focus on that a little bit, on, uh, on the uh, patriotic things. But uh, uh, for this Sunday, I want us to come back to that, uh, the seven essential biblically mandated ministries. What are they? We uh, have talked about a few of them, uh, but uh, just kind of in way of, I think it froze up on me again here, so can you reboot that? Okay, essential ministry number one is worship, okay? Number two, evangelism. Three, assimilation. Four is discipleship. Five is pastoral care. And six is church planting. And finally, number seven, of course, is the church property and finances and so on. All, all scripturally mandated ministries of the church. It's who we are. It's what we do. We need to keep focused on the mission of the church and what God really wants us to be about. We can get sidetracked with all kinds of other things. We can get sidetracked with politics. We can get sidetracked with social issues. We can get sidetracked with all those things. But folks, God wants us to be who we are supposed to be, and that is the church of Jesus Christ in this world. Amen? The body of Christ doing the work of the kingdom. So let's look at it briefly. Essential ministry number one is worship. That's a no-brainer, amen? That's the first thing that we should be about is worshiping our God. God's Word is full of scriptures calling us to worship and honor the one who created us, Almighty God, amen? We are the very first thing. It is, it is the primary uh, uh, goal of man, the primary uh, purpose of man is to worship God. Almighty God. So everything that we do begins with worship. Everything that we do is should be an act of worship unto God. Amen? Everything that we do, not just on Sunday morning for an hour, but all week long, everything that we do is done as unto the Lord. In Psalm 95, we, re we read, Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture. In, in 1 Chronicles 16, we read, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. What was the very first command that God gave to His people when He gave them the Ten Commandments? What was the very first one? You should know this. You should know the Ten Commandments. What is the very first one? You shall have no other gods but me. Amen? 
Amen? And, and closely akin to that is the second one. You shall not have anything that you create and, and, and bow down to anything that you make or create or any, anything in all creation. We only worship our God. The very first command. When Jesus himself was being tempted by the devil, Remember that when he was 40 days and 40 nights, he hadn't eaten a thing, which, which I'm not sure how I could ever get away with that. I have a hard time missing lunch. But, uh, but you know, but he, 40 days and 40 nights, he was in the wilderness, and he was just in the presence of God. And Satan came and tried to get him to bow down, tried to get Jesus, force Jesus at his weakest physical point possible, Satan tried to force him to bow down and worship Satan. What did Jesus ultimately say to, what scripture did Jesus quote to the devil? Ultimately, when all the temptations were done, he came down to this, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Amen? So in that time of great temptation, when he was at his weakest, Jesus said, the scripture says, worship the Lord your God, worship him only. Do you understand why worship is an essential ministry of the church? Folks, let me tell you something. What we do here on Sunday mornings is a vital part of what we do as a church family. Amen? It's a vital part of what we do but it includes everything else that we do as well, worshiping the Lord. It is an essential, biblically mandated ministry of the church. Essential ministry number two is evangelism. That's a no-brainer too, amen? That's a no-brainer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, <laughs> if I had a wayward child who was lost and and living in rebellion or living in sin and and literally dying because of what that what he was he or she was doing wouldn't you as a mother or a father want that child to come home you would want so desperately for that child to please come home folks that's our god that's our heavenly father amen that's his spirit he, he eagerly wants everyone to come home to him. And Jesus, the Son of God, proved the love of God by coming and, and actually coming to us and suffering the death penalty that we deserved on the cross. And in our place, he took our sins. He took our guilt upon himself so that and he suffered that death penalty so that we can receive god's forgiveness and come home to get to him aren't you glad of that evangelism we can receive god's forgiveness and blessing and grace and life through faith in jesus evangelism is not a horrible word some people when they think of evangelism they immediately go oh no 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 that's not for me that's not folks evangelism is not something to be feared Evangelism is simply sharing the good news with everyone that God is freely offering his forgiveness and gift of eternal life to anyone who would believe in Jesus. Amen? It's simply sharing the good news, and it is good news. Evangelism comes from the Greek word euangelizo, which means to declare good news evangelism. In fact, by the way, if you look at the word evangelism, what do you see right in the middle of it? The word angel. What is the word angel in the Greek word? It means messenger. An angel is a messenger. When we share the good news with others, we are being like an angel to them, sharing the good news. And evangelism is simply sharing the good news with others. Do you understand why evangelism is such an essential part of the ministry of the church? It is an essential. It's who we are. It's what we are to be doing. It is, it is very at the heart of who we are and what we do. Essential ministry. Uh, oh, by the way, Mark 16, 15 says, go into all the world and Preach or proclaim the what? The gospel, the good news 
to all nations. Essential ministry number three is the next logical step. You've shared the gospel with somebody. You, once you share the good news with someone and, and lead them to saving faith in Jesus, what's the next thing we want to do? We want to bring them into the family. Amen? We want to bring them. We want to do everything we can to help those new believers feel welcomed into the family, welcomed into the heart of our church family. Acts 15, 7 says, welcome one another as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. Another translation of that scripture says, receive one another as Christ welcomed received you. Essential ministry number four is discipleship. Here's another no-brainer. How many of you, when you had a baby, ladies, you had a baby and you just said, okay, have a nice life? Okay? You had a child and you gave birth to that child and you say, okay, have a nice life. Well, the same is true with evangelism. You have to then take them and nurture them and invest into them and help that new child grow up to be a godly man or a godly woman. Amen? Jesus commanded it. Go and do what? Make disciples. What is a disciple? A disciple is a follower of Jesus. Amen? Make disciples followers of Jesus in all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So what the Lord commands us, we teach others to do the same. We help them to understand what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Simply put, folks, you and I are to first be a disciple of Jesus, right? You and I first are to be a follower of Jesus, active, daily follower of Jesus, patterning our lives after his life. And then we want to do our best in the power of the Holy Spirit to lead others to become followers of Jesus. Our interest, folks, is not in just getting more people in, into the church. Am I okay by saying that? Am I okay by saying that? Our interest is not just to get more people into the church. Our interest is to help people become followers of Jesus themselves. Amen? That is our interest, to lead others so that they can experience God's love and forgiveness and grace and life. Our church's mission statement. By the way, you folks know that we have a mission statement, not just this local church, but I'm talking about the Church of the Nazarene Universal. You know what our mission statement is? To make Christ-like disciples in the nations. If you go on our website, that's one of the first things you'll see. That's the purpose. It's on the side of our bus. It's who we are. It's what we're to be about. Amen? To make Christ-like disciples in the nations. So we want to make sure that we're designing our ministries in such a way to help each of us to grow spiritually into Christ-like maturity and make sure that we are fulfilling that great commission of going and making disciples of all nations. Folks, I want to share something with you that I think is important. It's not the church's responsibility to make you grow spiritually. It's your own responsibility to have your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? It's not the church's responsibility to force you to grow, but it is our responsibility to provide everything we can to help you grow spiritually. Amen? So the ministries we have, the Bible studies that we have, the home Bible studies, the Sunday school classes, our worship services, our prayer times, it's all about helping you to grow spiritually. We provide the means, but if you're not here, you get what I mean? 
if you're not participating in it, then what are you doing to, to take responsibility to grow spiritually? What are you doing? We're going to do everything we can to provide the means and more to, to provide the opportunity for you to be able to grow spiritually. We're going to provide everything we can to help you in your spiritual growth. The Apostle Paul wrote, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purposes. Amen? It is Almighty God who wants to do that work within you to help you to become more like Jesus. Let me ask you this morning, is your heart set on personally growing as a disciple of Jesus? Is your heart set on that? Is it your passion to become more like Jesus? You know what holiness is, don't you? It's not thou shalt not do this or thou shalt not. You want to know what holiness is? It's being like Jesus. It's being like Jesus. Amen? That's holiness. So we need to, we need to ask ourselves, am I personally set on growing as a disciple of Jesus? Are you studying your Bible throughout the week? Are you coming to the prayer times when we have prayer times? Are you attending home Bible studies when we provide home Bible studies and we're trying to increase the number of those home Bible studies? Are you coming to the Sunday school classes? Are you actively trying to lead others to faith in Jesus? That's all a part of what it really means to be a follower of Jesus. So do you understand why discipleship is at the heart of who we are and what we do? Do you understand why that and why we need to be about that? Doing our best to help make disciples. It's because Jesus commanded it and it comes from the heart of God. And now we want to turn to the fifth, to the, the fifth essential ministry of the church, and that is pastoral care. Now, when I say pastoral care, I'm not talking about just me. Right? Right? You need to understand that. When we talk about pastoral care, I'm not talking just about my job. Because if you look in the Scriptures, my job is to help equip the people to do the work of the ministry. Amen? Amen? So we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, after next week. The fifth essential ministry of the church. A true sign of any spirit-filled church is when each of you really feels like that God cares for you. A true sign of a truly spirit-filled church is when you sense that you are loved and cared for, and that you are also intentionally caring for the needs of others. A true sign of a Spirit-filled church is the Spirit of God working in you and causing you to not only be loved and cared for, but you are also loving and caring for each other in a, in a great measure. Okay? How many of you believe, and by the way, that begins with a a personal, spiritual, growing relationship with God. That spirit happens from God working in us and through us to each other. How many of you believe that God really cares for you about everything? You believe with all of your heart that God really does care for you. 1 Peter 5, 7, scripture that you hopefully know, says this, cast all your cares on him because he, say it with me, he cares for you. Cast all your anxiety on him. Some translations say, the Greek word used there literally means to be pulled apart in different directions. How many of you feel sometimes that you're being pulled apart in different directions? That's anxiety, right? 
when you feel like that everything, the world and everything that's going on, you're just being ripped apart. That's a good definition of anxiety. That's a good definition of care. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Amen? God is actually inviting us to cast all those cares on me, he is saying, because I care for you. All your anxieties cast on him. In Isaiah 41, we read of God himself saying, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, for I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Praise God. Praise God for, for this description of his tremendous love that we see here in Isaiah. Isaiah 49, 13 says, the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. And, and in Isaiah 66, as a mother comforts her child, so I will I comfort you and you will be comforted. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. I'm so glad that Jesus, when he gave us his, his uh, example of prayer, told us to begin with what? Our heavenly what? Father. Our heavenly Father. Our Father who art in heaven. And then you see this, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Now that word fear is not a negative term. It's a very positive term. It means to revere, to hold in awe. When we hold God in awe, that's worship by the way, when we hold God in a state of awe and, uh, and understand his bigness and who he is, then he says, that's the ones that I have compassion on. Amen? When people don't care about God and things happen in life and they haven't been serving God and that they blame God for this and that and the other, they don't know God, do they? They don't know God. Because God describes himself as a heavenly father who has compassion on those who truly love him, fear him, revere him, hold him in awe. <clears throat> in Psalm 34, the Lord, this is one of my favorites, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Have you ever been brokenhearted before? You ever felt brokenhearted because of whatever? The scripture says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. In Psalm 116, 5, the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. And, and we see one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 46, God is our refuge and our strength an ever-present help in time of trouble. The Lord is with us. God of Jacob is our fortress. And then we see, he says, be still. This is my favorite part. Just be still and know. Richie translation, I've got your back. Be still and know that I am God. Amen? So when we see these things happening and we're experiencing these anxieties, we see a God who says, I've got this. Just trust in me. Scripture after Scripture clearly showing how much that God cares for us. Several Scriptures even speak of God being like a shepherd, caring for his sheep. Like a shepherd, caring for his sheep. What did Jesus say? I am the good shepherd. I am the good 
shepherd. Of course, folks, the greatest revelation of how God showed his love and care and compassion and concern for us is when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take the death penalty that we deserved and suffer and die on that cross in our place so that you and I can be saved. Amen? That's the greatest revelation of God's care and compassion and concern when he gave his one and only son, when Jesus, who is God in the flesh, gave himself in our place, taking the suffering upon himself, the guilt and the sins of the entire human race upon himself, and he suffered and died on that cross for us in our place. But then, thank God, on the third day, he was raised by the power of God from the dead. And so God revealed his great compassion. The greatest tangible way was through Jesus, willing to suffer so much for us. So we see the love of God. We see the care of God. We see the compassion of God. We see the patience of God. We see all of these things in our God and who he really is. The question is, the main question is simply this. Do you believe that God wants that spirit to permeate the church family? Anybody? Do you believe that God wants his spirit and same care and compassion and concern and willingness to bear the burdens permeating our own lives and also the church family? That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about pastoral care, that kind of compassion, that kind of love. Do you think that God wants us to be more like him? When he created us, how did he create us? What does it say? say right there in Genesis? Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. That's how God originally created us to be. But sin destroyed it all. Selfishness set in. Instead of that selflessness of, of God and that spirit of God, sin set in. And so the world says, I don't care about you. I only care about me. That's, that's sin. That's at the heart of sin. Amen? I only care about me. I don't care about anybody else. It's all about me. But God says, that's not what I created you to be. Return to me and let my spirit permeate your life. Do you, do you think that God wants to see that same spirit that he has to, to permeate the church? It's, it's a no-brainer, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, we read, Praise be to the Lord God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of what? Compassion. And the God of all what? Comfort who comforts us in all of our troubles. Now, we could stop there and say, well, that's nice. But the Scripture goes on to say, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves have received. Amen? That's pastoral care. That's the spirit of pastoral care that God wants to see within his people so that we can Receive not only God's comfort and compassion and care, but then so that we can then translate that into caring and loving and bearing each other's burdens. Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, how did Jesus show his love for us? He was willing to suffer and die for us. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And here's the clincher. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Amen? <clears throat> Folks, God wants that same spirit of love and compassion and, and care to be released within our church family, to be released within every true Bible-believing, Christ-honoring church family. He wants his spirit to be released in the church among his people. Galatians 6, 2 says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will what? Fulfill 
the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? Love each other. How do we show it? By carrying each other's burdens. How many of you think it's a good thing when you're going through time of, of trouble or time of, of, of sorrow or whatever that you have somebody right there with you? How many of you think that's a good thing? That you know that somebody is going to be right there with you. One person can't do it all. But what if all of us do that? Amen? What if all of us are a part of that? You would see the power of God unleashed like nobody's business. The scripture says, carry each other's bur burdens, and that way you're fulfilling the law of Christ. And verse 10 says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. The world has their view of the church, and sometimes it's not so good. What if the world saw the church like this? Amen? What if the world saw the church that does this? It would change the hearts of many. The Apostle John wrote, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, then how can the love of God be in that person? You know what I'm saying? You see people and they have needs and you go, eh, that's their problem. Is that the love of God in you? Is that, is that what the love of God in you means? The scripture goes on to say, Dear children, let us not love with just words or speech, but with actions and in truth. James 5.14 says, If anyone among you is sick, yes, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of Jesus. Yes, call on the elders, call on the pastors for that. But I submit to you folks that it should be all of us who are caring and loving and concerned. And by the way, it helps when you actually tell somebody about it. <laughs> I've had people say, well, the pastor never came over to see me when I was in the hospital. And I'm going, but I never knew you were in the hospital. But what if somebody else knew about it and they got the word to me? You guarantee I'd be there as long as I'm able to. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 4, 2 says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Doing what? Bearing with one another in love. First Thessalonians 5.11 says, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. I want to tell you something, folks. There is a spirit of God that is in this church family now that I just am so thankful for. There is a spirit of caring and compassion and concern and love for one another. And we're doing a lot to try to increase that. We're taking significant steps to build that ministry. And everybody can be a part of it. That, that, that spirit of love and compassion and encouragement, bearing each other's burdens, doing good, comforting one another, sharing, caring. Folks, that's the language of the Bible. That's the language of the Bible. That is the spirit of the living God. As God himself loves us and cares for us and has great concern and compassion for each and every one of us, God wants to see that spirit alive among his people as well. Jesus said, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you've done it unto me. When you share that love, that compassion, that concern, walking beside somebody, praying for them, a phone call, uh, uh, doing whatever, folks, you're not just doing it for them. Jesus said, you're doing it unto him. Amen? You're doing it for me. Praise the Lord. I submit to you folks 
that the whole world is waiting to see how the church is going to respond to the great financial and difficulties that we're going to have up ahead of us. How many of you think that we're in for a very troublesome time? I do. And I believe the world is going to be seeing how the church responds and how we are caring for one another and loving each other. Do you want to see the Spirit of God unleashed in this church family? Do you want to see the Spirit of God just poured out in this church family? Having that spirit of genuine love, deep compassion, caring, and encouragement, folks, that's what's going to win a lot of people to faith in Jesus. Amen? When the, when, the, when the world sees that within the church family, I guarantee you they're going to want to be a part of that. The world wants that. The world needs that. When they see Jesus, when they see that Jesus is real in us, then they're going to want to be a part of that. And it's going to change people's hearts. God proved how much he cares for us in the power of his Holy Spirit within our hearts I would like for us right now this day to dedicate ourselves anew to truly caring for one another Jesus said by this you will know that they will know that you are my disciples if you want to show that you're truly a follower of Jesus, then you will have that Spirit of God within you that just causes you to be deeply caring for the needs of others, deeply wanting to be a part of their lives, bearing them, helping them, carrying their burdens, walking with them in their time of trial. That is the Spirit of Almighty God in us. Praise the Lord. I'd like for us in closing to sing a song that's kind of a dedication song. It's an old hymn that I dearly love, but I would like for us to sing it now as kind of a dedication of ourselves uh, to that spirit of pastoral care, that spirit of, 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 of the love of God for each other. Amen. Would you stand with me? And let's sing this in closing. And may God bless you. As you sing this song, I hope that you are making this commitment. Brother, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you be my servant We are pilgrims on a journey. commitment yeah father in heaven pour your spirit out on us lord help us to think about this this is practical christianity help us lord to think about this and to truly have that heart of being just like you you told us to make disciples well here's some real disciple making happening right now as we become more and more like you Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us today. Bless us now as we, as we uh, leave this place and take the Spirit 
of Christ with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together, shall we? Mighty is our God. Mighty is our King. Tonight, 5 o'clock, prayer time. Have a great day.